Hey there, we are so thankful that you have made the choice to watch one of ACC's messages online. You know, as you are watching and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. You're sitting at your phone or your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag you belong at ACC as God is teaching you different things during this message. But you know, we say you belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means we would love to have you join us during one, our, one of our Sunday services at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. here at 710 Aqua Heart Road. So we would love to have you jump into this message and we're believing God is gonna do some awesome things in your life today. Good morning, church. Man, I'm uh, happy to see you all here on this Labor Day weekend. Traditionally, uh, attendance on a Labor Day weekend is, is, is a bit low. And uh, you guys don't care about tradition and stra uh, statistics, do you? I'm glad you all are here. I want to take a quick moment before we jump into our message for today. Uh, there is something incredible happening in, in about two weeks. And we want to make sure we stop and we pause and we highlight that right here in my hands, I have one of our, our, our new life group leader kits. And there are in this room right now, uh, not just this service, but the other services, we have a total of 25 life groups that are getting ready to launch a brand new year. And I'm really excited to tell you that the, the participation number in our life groups is close to double what it was last year at this time. So you guys are doing an awesome job. Uh, uh, signing up for life groups. If you haven't signed up for one yet, it is not too late. If you're afraid of what it looks like to be in a life group and you'd rather start small, you don't want to go knock on a stranger's door for the first time, I get it. You can start with what we call a starter group. We have starter groups that meet in the church for the first couple of months and then they move into someone's house where you already kind of know each other at that point. So there's a lot of options for you, but I want to pause for a moment. If you are one of our 25 life group leaders would you do me a favor and stand up right where you are? All of our life group leaders, wherever you are, stand up so we can see you. We can <laughs> applaud you for you. I have a kit that I want you to have. So stay standing. Don't sit down yet. I'm going to go ahead and give this first one over here to the Minatellos. There you go. And we have some more. Stay, stay right where you're at. We're going to bring these to you. And what I want to do while you're standing and while you're holding one of these life group kits you're going to notice that the front cover of the kit is a little bit messy. Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you guys right now, your life group is going to be a bit messy. You're going to deal with some stuff. There's going to be things that come up, people struggling with some different things. Uh, you're going to like, try to figure this whole thing out, some of you, for the first time. That's okay. Your life group is going to be a bit messy. But what we want to do right now is we want to pray over you, and we want to commission your life group ministry for the year. So if you are around someone who's standing up, would you do me a favor and uh, maybe put an arm on a shoulder, a hand on a shoulder. If you can't reach someone, just reach out your hand and uh, towards someone in that direction. And would you join me in praying and commissioning these leaders for an incredible year? Uh, Father, I, I, right now, God, I lift up along with this church together in Koinonia community, God, we pray together over these ministries. God, we know that you are going to do some incredible things through these life groups, things that we can't accomplish on a Sunday morning in this setting. God, you, you, you want to love people intimately and, and meet their needs and to show hospitality and to all these things that are going to happen through these leaders and their ministries. Father, right now, I pray a special blessing over them. I pray a special blessing over their homes and their families. God, the sacrifices that they're willing to make to lead this church in, in life group community. God, I pray right now for families that are in their groups that haven't even signed up yet, but are today going to sign up for their life groups. God, I pray for everyone in this church that is in our life group communities, God, that, that you would start to and continue to grow our faith and to develop us into 
uh, disciples who look more and more like you. Allow these leaders to, to figure out uh, what it is that you're calling them to and to step into it boldly. We're so thankful for them. We commission them now for a year of fruitful ministry. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Really, really thankful. I, um, I sent this out to, to all of our life group leaders yesterday in a message, but I want you to hear it from me, and I want everyone else in the room to hear this. Life group leaders, uh, no, you know you're not supposed to play favorites as a pastor, but you all are my favorites. All right, I just want you to know. Because the, the, the amount of sacrifice that you're making, the way that you are bending over backwards, the, 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 the mess that you kind of have to trudge through a little bit to be a life group leader, it is a beautiful thing that you're doing, and I thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, the, the mission and vision of this church involves you in such a great and powerful way. So thank you for doing that. Uh, my name is Matt. For those who I haven't introduced myself to yet, I am on the pastoral team here. And we are in our fourth week of four weeks in our Little Bit of Wisdom series. We have been going through the book of Proverbs, and we're remembering, right, that uh, a wisdom is a good thing, that a little bit of wisdom goes a long way. How many of you have enjoyed going through the book of Proverbs this, this summer? Hasn't it been an incredible time going through uh, some, some great verses together? And we are going to continue now, and we're going to wrap up our series in the book of Proverbs but there is so much in this, in this book that trying to cover it in four weeks just doesn't really seem fair uh, to the, the amount of wisdom in these pages. So I want to continue to encourage you. Remember, there's 31 Proverbs, which means you have a proverb for every day of the month. So every day you can wake up and, and you can read the proverb for the day and you're going to get a whole bunch of wisdom out of it. The reason we're, we are doing this series is our theme verse for Proverbs 4, 7 reminds us that getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. So if you want to be wise today, if you want to be wise tomorrow, then the wisest thing that you can possibly do is add to and, and you know, pile on and learn more wisdom. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. We started back three weeks ago. Uh, four weeks ago now, we started back on understanding that the Bible says that the foundation of wisdom, that the thing you have to have first before you can build wisdom on top of it, is this thing called the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord is basically a reverent understanding of who God is, that He is awesome, and that He is holy, and that He is right. When we understand that, we can build on top of it. And then once we understand that, that leads to a life, remember, of contentment. It leads to a life where we recognize that what we have is good and we don't care about what other people have because we know we have God and He is awesome and holy and right. He's all that we need. So we're, it leads to a life, a full life of contentment. And then we moved on to last week. When we have a life that's content, we're able to then be generous because we don't hoard onto the things we have. We're thankful for what we have, so we're able to be generous with what we have. And that leads us to today, where we're going to talk about uh, this process called learning. This, this thing called the, the life of a learner. And I want everyone in this room to, to live this kind of life. I want all of us to have a learner type of life. Uh, there are so many proverbs in the Bible about learning. And we're going to be flipping all over the place in the Bible this morning. So if you want to grab your Bible out, turn to Proverbs. We're not going to leave Proverbs, but we're going to be flipping back and forth. So if you want to test your Bible uh, sword drills, uh, you can pull out your Bible and see if you can keep up with me. I want to encourage you to, to underline these verses. These verses are so powerful that if you own your own Bible, don't be afraid to write in your own Bible. That's what you have it for. Uh, write in it. Mark, mark it up. You know, put some, some notes in there. If you're using one of the church's Bibles, go ahead and underline in that one too, because whoever's going to grab it next might need that verse. So feel free to underline today. Uh, the reason why I think we ought to underline verses, the reason I want you to pay attention to what we're talking about today is Proverbs 1.5 says, let the wise listen to these Proverbs. In other words, let ACC, a church that longs to be people full of wisdom, Listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. I believe that this is a church with many wise people, but I believe that we can become wiser still. So let us learn 
and become even wiser, let those with understanding receive guidance. So I want us to to pay attention, to underline, and figure things out as we go. Because the truth is this. Whatever it is, uh, you know, uh, each of us have a label that, that kind of is accurate for us. Like for me, I'm a husband. That's, that's a label I'm proud of. The truth is, I want to learn to be a better husband. For you, maybe you are an employee. You ought to want to be a better employee. Or for parents, you want to be a better parent, a better wife, a better friend, a better coworker, whatever it is that you are, I hope your desire is to be better at it. And in order to do that, in order to improve, we have to go through this, this concept of being a learner. What does it look like to have a life uh, that, that learns, to, to constantly be improving and growing in who you are? And the book of Proverbs is perfect for a learner. In fact, 26 of the 31 chapters in Proverbs I would say the theme, even though the Proverbs kind of jump all over the place, 26 of the 31 chapters have as, as its kind of primary theme the concept of learning, of being open to advice and receiving uh, correction and, and what it takes to, to be a learner. So here's what I want to start with. I want to give you all four types of people that struggle to learn. Four types of people that when they have an opportunity to learn, they struggle with learning because they fit into one of these four categories. And I'm going to be honest with you because I'm just like you. What our, our natural instinct is to do when you see a list like this is to think of that other guy who struggles with these. You know what I'm talking about? You're going to see one of these and you're going to think, oh, I know so and so. He's just like that. Or I know such and such. She's just like that. But what I want to encourage you to do is turn off that way of thinking, and I want you to, instead of finding something to label someone else, I want us to try to find which one is our thing. You're going to read through these four things, these four things that are going to keep you from from being a, a great learner, and you're going to relate to one of them. Probably, if you're like me, you're going to relate to a few of them, all right? So here's here's what we're going to start with. We're going to start with uh, the babbler. The babbler. This is a person, uh, this is an interesting word. Uh, it's actually used in scripture. We're going to read it here in just a second. This person loves the sound of their own voice. They love to hear themselves speaking. In fact, the reason they struggle to learn is because they don't ever, they're never quiet long enough to allow anyone else to speak truth into their life. This is, this is called the babbler. And we find out in Proverbs 10, 8. Here's what it says about the babbler. It says, the wise are glad to be instructed, but babbling fools fall flat on their faces. Those people who just keep their mouth running all the time, that just love to be the one talking and never stop long enough to listen and learn. The Bible says that, that those people are fools who fall flat on their faces. Some of us, we struggle with this. I'm not going to make you raise your hand. I'll raise mine. I struggle with this. I struggle sometimes in being quiet long enough to allow other people to speak truth into my life. You know, when I have a problem, I just immediately start talking about it. We have, uh, many of you know that I haven't been the lead pastor at this church for very long. In fact, I haven't been a pastor for very long. And I still feel like every day is a learning experience. I'm still constantly making mistakes and figuring things out along the way. Thank you all so much for your graciousness in that. But our staff here, uh, they have a lot of wisdom that they can pour into me. And it's this really cool thing where we as a staff, when we see an article or something online or a video that we think there's something in there that all of us could benefit from, we share it with each other because we want to be learners. And there was this one time, Pastor Chris who's our our youth and young adults pastor, he sent me an article, and he didn't send it just to me because that would have been too obvious, right? (laughs) Uh, But I knew who it was for. Um, uh, He sent me an article, and the article was was, was a really cool thing. It was saying, when you're a leader, and you 
propose a question to your team, don't be the first one then to speak after that. Make sure you're quiet and allow other people to speak first because what happens if you're the first to speak is that you're basically going to tell everyone else what you want them to say back to you, right? And I struggled with that. And I, I realized when I read it that I, I was like, I think I do that. And then the very next day, we were at like a staff meeting and I asked a question and then I immediately started to answer my own question and I stopped and I said, yep, I do that. I do that. I looked at Chris and I said, okay, yep. Like we have to learn this, this thing of, of just being quiet sometimes in order to learn. My, my uh, middle daughter... Uh, likes to come up to my office here at the church. And right now in the office, we have a, a, a camera and a teleprompter set up so that when we record our life group training videos, we have that kind of information in front for all of my life group leaders right now. They're thinking, oh, that's how he does it. Uh, well, anyway, so we have a teleprompter. And Madeline, when she's hanging out with me in the office, she likes to write her own scripts for a talk show that she's the host of that doesn't really exist, Right. And then she'll put the teleprompter, she'll set it up, and she'll sit down, and we'll record her doing her talk show. And she's named her talk show, and it's called Shut Up and Listen. <laughs> and I love it. But then I think about this problem where I like to sometimes listen to my own voice more than I, I care to listen to other people. And I think, you know what? I guess it runs in the family. <laughs> like my Madeline, right? Hey, you just be quiet. Let me do the talking, right? But the truth is that all of us struggle with this. And we need to learn that, that that's not the right way to, to be open to learning. Proverbs 18, verse 2 says, Fools have no interest in understanding. They only want to speak. They only want to air their own opinions. They just want to tell you what they think. They don't really care to understand your perspective. Let us not be Babblers. In fact, on the other hand, the opposite side of this would be this. Learners know when to shut up and listen. All of us need to learn the, the joy and the beauty of being quiet and letting truth be spoken into our lives. Here's another person that has a really hard time learning. This is some of you in the room. Uh, this is all of us at some point. It's, it's called the know-it-all. Now, all of you right now, you're thinking, I know the know-it-all. I know that person. And you're thinking of somebody else. But listen, sometimes this person is you. And maybe this person is always you. That you walk into a room and you find your identity in being the most knowledgeable person in that room about everything. That that's where you find your kind of purpose in life is to know everything. And here's the problem. When you're a know-it-all, you don't have any reason to learn because you know it all, right? There's a, there's a problem right off the get-go is that when you have this attitude, when you find your identity in knowing everything, that when somebody else tries to speak truth into your life, you say, whoa, 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 I already know. I, I, I know it. Save your breath. Because they don't want to admit that there's something they don't know. Proverbs 12, 15 says, fools think their own way is right. In other words, fools think that they already have the answer. They know it all. But the wise listen to others. See, on the other hand, learners know what they don't know. And I want us to be learners. I want us to be a church that knows that we don't know it all. That knows what we don't know. Here's another type of person that struggles to learn. They're called the proud the proud prefer to do things their own way. They prefer to go it alone. They prefer not to be corrected because they're too proud to have somebody else speak truth into their lives. Proverbs has a lot to say about proud people. Proverbs 18.26 says, Those who trust in their own insight are foolish, but anyone who walks in wisdom is safe. In Proverbs 13, 13 says, People who despise advice are asking for trouble. Those who respect a command will succeed. You see that phrase in there, those who despise advice? Can you imagine? I mean, I know for all of us, 
even the proud people in this room right now, it's hard for us to admit that that's us. But when you have a proud attitude, really what's happening is you're saying, when somebody else tries to speak truth or something good into my life, I despise it because that's somehow admitting that they had something that I didn't, that they are right and I'm wrong, that they are somehow superior to me, and by speaking truth into my life, I am somehow inferior to them. Our pride keeps us from learning to the point where we despise it. In fact, another reason I think we despise advice is oftentimes advice comes in the form of correction. How many of you enjoy being corrected? That's not fun, is it? Nobody likes to do something and then, and then find out you know, that you, you did it poorly or that you need to do it differently. A proud person would never want to hear someone say something like that about them. There was a, about two months ago, I, I was teaching on this stage on Sunday morning, and I, I was at the 8.30 service, and then after the 8.30 service, I walked off of the stage, and what I normally do is I connect with my wife some, somewhere, somewhere in private, and, and, and typically what happens in that conversation is we'll, we'll bounce some ideas off of each other, she'll, she'll, she'll provide some correction of hey, this didn't really make sense, or you didn't say that word properly, or you're, you know, this, and she'll, she'll help provide some correction that's really helpful to me. But this particular Sunday, I walked off stage, and before we even had a chance to get anywhere, she just looked at me and she's like, mm, don't do that again. <laughs> and I knew it too, like in that moment, I knew that was really, really rough. Like the whole church was like falling asleep, and I was just like not feeling well, and it was just, it was a mess. And I would much rather, listen, I would much rather get off the stage and go to my wife every Sunday. And she's just like, A plus, right? I mean, that would be awesome to just hear that kind of encouragement every time. In fact, if I were a really proud person, I would just want to surround myself with people who are just always telling me how awesome I am. But the truth is, I am not awesome. And there's a lot about me that is <laughs> in messed up and needs correction. And I have a wife who lovingly helps me. In fact, if you ever have a chance to sit through an 8.30 service, and then come back to the 10 o'clock service, you get two different sermons. Did you know that? <laughs> there, there's a whole point that you might not be hearing that the 8.30 got to hear, or I've added something for you guys that they didn't get to hear. It's because I'm trying to do my best, even though it hurts, to receive that correction, either from my wife or from someone on staff or from an overseer, saying, hey, maybe there's a better way to say that. We need to be uh, not too proud to receive that correction. On the other hand, learners know they need more and more wisdom. So there's the proud person, but on the other hand, there's a person who knows they need more and more wisdom. And here's the fourth type of person that struggles to learn. And this one is going to hurt. This, get ready because you're about to feel like a dagger go into you. If you're like me, this one really hurt me. As soon as I wrote it, I said, ouch, why did I write that? Maybe I could take it back. Um, a person that struggles to learn, we're going to call this person the lazy. My best way of, of phrasing this is they watch too much TV to learn anything. This person spends too much time on the couch too much time in bed, too much time doing nothing helpful that they are not able to learn anything good because they're filling their mind with junk all day long. And if you're like me, you find yourself like, man, you know, we struggle sometimes. Man, I'm really having a hard time finding time to get into God's word, but I sure found time to binge watch whatever on Netflix. And like we, we, we find time to do what we really care about. And oftentimes what we really care about is being lazy. And when we choose laziness, we have a really hard time learning. In fact, Proverbs 20, verse 4 says, Those too lazy to plow in the right season will have no food at the harvest. I want you all to have so much wisdom in your life that when it comes time to need it, you have it. And you weren't too lazy to, to, to learn it. See, on the other hand, learners are intentional about acquiring truth. So now I've covered four things, right? 
uh, four things that we don't want uh, to, to have uh, be a part of our lives because those things keep us from being learners. We understand that these four things, uh, being a babbler, right, being a know-it-all, and being a, a, a proud person or a lazy person, they're going to keep us from learning. Let's move past these four things that you don't want to be, and let me encourage you with four things you ought to be. Four things that you want to put into your pattern of your life. Four things you want to start doing today so that you can be a better learner. Okay, and the first one is this. Learners initiate. Learners initiate. And what I mean by that is they, they, they start the process of learning. Usually, this comes in the form of asking questions. This means that if you are an employee, you initiate the process of learning by moving into your boss's office and asking out of your mouth, what is it I can do to be a better employee here? You have to initiate. You have to ask the right questions. It's going into the master bedroom where your wife is sitting on the bed and saying, honey, what can I do to be a better husband? It's going into your children's bedroom and saying, girls, what can I do to be a better father? It's calling up your best friend on the phone and saying, what can I do to be a better friend to you? You have to initiate this process, and that's going to take uh, some sort of action on your part. You're going to have to start this process by initiating. Uh, one way, I just said, is by asking questions. Another way you initiate this process of learning is, is an uh, action verb called opening. We have to spend time in God's Word initiating learning. If you're not spending any time in God's Word, if you're not spending any time with Him and, and, and letting His Holy Spirit speak to you through, through reading and through prayer, you're not going to learn anything from this. The, the, the fact is that when you ask other people for advice, sometimes what they give you back is not going to be good advice. Sometimes we get what we've been joking around about, the, the bad advice. But the truth is that you're never going to get any bad advice from this book. And if we initiate learning by going into God's word and with an open mind, we're not too lazy to do it. We're not too proud to do it. We don't think we've already read it all. We already know it all. We're not so busy talking that we're not, busy, you know, not spending time reading. We have to initiate by opening God's word and spending time in it. All right? And then there's another way that we can initiate learning is through reading. Maybe there's some great books that you need to read. There's other people who've experienced things that you're experiencing now. They've been there, done that, and they have all sorts of wisdom to pour into you. I want to encourage you to become a reader. Maybe you're like me, and reading's not really your thing. I muster through it. You know, like I know that there's some great wisdom in other people's thoughts, and I try to initiate through reading. All right, so initiating is one, one thing. Proverbs 18.15 says this, intelligent people, excuse me, are always ready to learn. Their ears are what? Open. In fact, I want us to, to initiate, to have that openness that we say, you know what, I, I'm ready to ask questions and then open my ears and hear what people say back to me. I'm going to initiate. Proverbs 12.1 says, To learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. You know, in my house growing up, my parents told me stupid was a bad word. It's in the Bible, so have that, <laughs> Mom. Um, <laughs> let's look at that again. It, to learn, you must love discipline. It is stupid to hate correction. Here's the, here's the truth. You know when you ask a question, the person is probably gonna provide an answer and sometimes we're not gonna like it. Sometimes we're not gonna like what the person has to say. It's gonna come in the form of a correction or advice and we need to be willing to accept that. And we need to make sure we don't get correction confused with rejection. Someone who provides correction to you is not rejecting you. They're helping you improve. Here's another thing that learners do. This is the next step in the process. Learners implement. Have you 
<laughs> this is one where I'm going to give you permission to think of somebody else that's like this, all right? You don't have to be the one to try to find this in yourself. Have you ever met a smart idiot? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like someone who's just like off the charts, IQ, just crazy smart, crazy knowledgeable, and yet they've never figured out how to take any of that and do anything practical and good with it. It's like their life is a mess, and you're thinking, what, what good is all of that knowledge and all of that wisdom unless you implement it? You have to take it from your head and actually do something with it, otherwise it's useless to you. Right? Learners understand the importance of implementing. Proverbs 13, 14 says this, The instruction of the wise is like a life-giving fountain. Those who, what? Accept it. Avoid the snares of death. You see, when you just hear it, and your brain processes it, and you store it somewhere, that's not accepting it. Accepting it is when you take it, and you acknowledge it as good, and you apply it to your life. Now, one thing I just said right there is acknowledge it as good. Because sometimes what happens when you ask other people for wisdom, what you get back is not really that great. It's not good advice. What they're telling you to do isn't good. Maybe what you ask your, uh, you ask somebody a question and what they tell you to do, you're thinking, that's not great at all. That's terrible advice. What I want to encourage you to do is to rely on and lean on the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are Christians, you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Lean on that spirit within you to help you determine what is good and what is bad advice. And as you figure out what's good, do it. Implement it. Make it a part of your life. All right? In fact, I would love uh, today to be what we call a next step day. What I mean by that is there are many of you in this room, you know in your head, you've already initiated, you've asked enough questions, you know in your head that you should, after you've get, uh, given your life to Christ, that you should be baptized. You know it. But you haven't implemented it. Some of you, you know that a lot of what the church is supposed to do in your life can't be done when there's 1,500 people that gather together on a Sunday morning. You know that life groups are an important part of your faith. You know it, but you haven't implemented it yet. You know that you should be serving, but you haven't implemented it yet. There's a next step that you're supposed to be taking. You know that God is awesome and holy and right and that he can do more with 90% of your income than you can do with 100. You know it up here, but you haven't implemented it yet. I want to encourage you to not just initiate and gain the knowledge and the wisdom, but to implement it, to apply it to your life. In fact, you can go to arundelcc.org slash next steps and all of the next steps that we can think of that you might need to take are right there. In fact, you could stop paying attention to me right now if you want, and you can go to arundelcc.org slash next steps and tell us, I'm ready to take a next step. I don't want anymore to be a babbler. I don't want to just talk about it anymore. I don't want to tell people how awesome God is with my mouth. I don't want to just uh, sit there and, and, and know it all anymore. I don't want to be too proud to take a next step, and I don't want to be too lazy to take a next step. I'm going to do it. I'm going to implement what I've learned. Here's a, a, another thing that learners do. Learners improve. In other words, learners, they start with the idea of initiating. They ask the questions. They take what they hear. They, they figure out the good from the bad. They take the good and they implement it. And then what happens when you implement good wisdom and good advice? You get better. You're going to see improvement happen in your life. You're going to become a better husband. You're going to become a better parent, a better friend, a better employee. Uh, you know, a better, whatever it is, you're going to become a better version of it because you're implementing good things, you're learning, and you're taking that wisdom, and you're gaining more and more, like the Bible says. That's a really, really good thing. There's this, this phrase I, I want you to process here. It says, encouragement feels good, but correction fosters growth. Again, this is the idea that you could go into your boss's office and ask, what can I be doing better? And just every time here, you're doing awesome. You just keep going. Or go up to your coach, what can I be doing to be better? Just, you're awesome. You're the best. And you can just hear encouragement all day long. And it'll make you feel really good about yourself. But it's not going to foster any growth in your life. 
The way to see improvement is to encourage and allow people to not only speak, right, to initiate and to speak in, to implement it, and then you'll see improvement as you kind of struggle through this, as you, as you get that, that instruction. You're going to improve. We've talked before about this process called sanctification. It's a churchy word, so if you're not a churchy person, you might not know this word, but I'll, I'll describe it. Sanctification is this, it's kind of like a, a pie graph. Now, just to be clear, God is with you, all right? So this, this graph does not, this, this illustration is not saying that God is over here and that you're over here and that you're not with God. When you've given your life to Christ, he resides in your heart. But what I am saying here is that if this is Christ's perfection and this is where you are in your journey to become more and more like Christ, this process in between and as you close the gap, that's called sanctification. It's you becoming more and more and more like Christ. And what happens when you're a learner, when you initiate, and then you take the good and you implement, you're going to see improvement. You're going to see sanctification happening in your life. You're going to see that you become more and more and more like Christ. That's a good thing. That's something we all want in our lives. And the fourth thing is this. Learners inspire Not only do they initiate, not only do they implement, not only do you see improvement in your own life, but what happens, this fourth thing is, is learners now take this process and they start replicating it. Now that you know some really great wisdom, now that you know how to be a good employee, you're going to inspire other people and you're going to teach them how they can be a better employee. Now that you've figured out how to be a better husband, you're going to grab other men and you're going to spend time with them in life group and you're going to encourage them and help them become better husbands. And when you've figured out some truth about the gospel and about the Bible in your life group, you're going to be able to inspire others and pour truth into them because you were a learner who initiated, who implemented, and who improved. And now you can inspire others to do the same. How, I don't know about you, how many of you want to be learners? If you want to have the life of a learner, these are the things you need to do. Proverbs 22, verse 6 reminds parents, it says, Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. In other words, you have the ability, mom and dad, to inspire wisdom into your children. You have the ability to speak truth into their life. And that's a good thing. So I have, I have two takeaways. I have two things I want you to walk away with today. Two things to maybe chew on. Maybe on the car ride home today, you can, you can discuss these as a family. The first one is what we call our little bit of wisdom number four. So every week we've given you a little bit of wisdom, kind of an overall takeaway. And your little bit of wisdom number four is this. A teachable spirit produces a life of consistent wisdom. A teachable spirit, a spirit that is willing to shut up and listen, a spirit that knows what it doesn't know, that isn't too proud to learn and to be corrected, that isn't too lazy to just sit around and do nothing. A, a teachable spirit produces a life of consistent wisdom. And the second takeaway I want to give you is, is straight from Scripture. It's a proverb. Proverb 19.20, and it says this. And this is my, my ask for you, church. ACC, I want to ask you to get all the advice and instruction you can so that you will be wise the rest of your life. Be willing to initiate. Be willing to implement. Be willing to improve and then to inspire others to do the same. As a reminder, it all starts with the foundation, right? Knowing that God is awesome, that he is holy, and that he is right. When we understand that, we can build on top of it this, this concept of being content in who God is and who he's made us to be. It's understanding this, this life of contentment, and then that life of contentment turns into a life of generosity, and the life of generosity turns into a life that wants to learn more and more about the most generous person that ever lived, God, so that we can become more like him. So as we sing this last song together after we pray here, I want to encourage you. If you need prayer today, 
If there's something going on in your life, maybe it's something I, I said that you want to talk about. Maybe you need to make a next step in deciding to follow Christ for the first time. Maybe you need to get baptized or you want to serve somewhere or you need to join a life group or you want to talk to someone about anything. Maybe you just need someone to pray with you about something going on in your life. As we sing this last song together, I want to encourage you to come forward. We're going to have our prayer team up here. Uh, they'd be willing to pray with you and encourage you. Uh, first, let's, let's pray together. God, I'm so thankful that you've instilled into us as a church a desire to be a church filled with wisdom. And God, we recognize that you're calling us to, to learn and to, to add more and more to that every day. God, help us to be learners. Help us to, to take the steps that we need to take to learn more about you. The God who is awesome, holy, and right. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we as a staff and as a church are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep down into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on a Sunday morning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. As a reminder, please remember, you belong at ACC.